Welcome to a video on limits of a sequence using the squeeze theorem. We learned in a previous video that if we can define a function f of x where f of n is equal to a sub n, which is our sequence, and we can find the limit of the function as x approaches infinity, this will also tell us the limit of the sequence as n approaches infinity. But sometimes, even if we can define a function where f of n is equal to a sub n, we still may have some difficulty finding the limit of the function. And this is where the squeeze theorem comes into play. This is what the squeeze theorem says. If we have three sequences, sequence A, B, and C, where sequence B is always greater than or equal to sequence A, and also less than or equal to sequence C for all n, and if the limit of A sub n as n approaches infinity equals L, as well as the limit as n approaches infinity of c sub n, then we can conclude by the squeeze theorem that the limit of b sub n as n approaches infinity is also equal to L. So what we're saying here is if we can define two sequences where sequence b will always be between the two, and we can find the limit of the two sequences that sandwich sequence b, that will also tell us the limit of sequence b. Let's take a look at this graphically. Let's say, for example, we defined two functions, one in red and one in blue, that sandwich the function in black. Meaning the black function is always less than or equal to the red function and greater than or equal to the blue function. If the limit as x approaches zero in this case equals zero for both the red and the blue function, and the black function is always between the two, the limit of the black function will also equal zero as x approaches zero. And if we zoom in here, we can see that it doesn't matter how close we get, the black function is always sandwiched in between the red and the blue function. And this is the idea behind the squeeze theorem. Here's another example of where the black function is always less than or equal to the red function and greater than or equal to the blue function. And so if we can determine the limits of the red and blue functions, as x approaches zero in this case, we can also conclude that we know the limit of the black function as well. So one of the major tasks in order to use the squeeze theorem is to determine the sequence A and sequence C that sandwich sequence B. So here we have B sub n is equal to sine n divided by two n. As n approaches infinity, sine of n will alternate between positive one and negative one, and two n will approach infinity. So we do have an idea that this, so we probably have a pretty good idea that this limit is going to converge because the limit will approach zero, but let's go ahead and apply the squeeze theorem. Since we know that sine n alternates between negative one and positive one, we could let a sub n equal negative one over two n, and we'll let c sub n equal positive one over two n. Since this would be the minimum value of the sequence and this would be the maximum value of the sequence, we could conclude that negative one over two n is less than or equal to sine n over two n, which is always less than or equal to one over two n. So the squeeze theorem states that if we can find the limit as n approaches infinity of negative one over two n, and the limit as n approaches infinity of positive one over two n, if these limits are the same, that will also give us the limit of the given sequence. Well here we have a fixed numerator and our denominator is increasing without bound, so we know this limit would be equal to zero, and the same thing here. So by the squeeze theorem, we can conclude that the limit of the given sequence must also equal zero, and therefore the sequence converges. Let's take a look at one that's a little more challenging. Here we have b sub n is equal to five to the power of n divided by n factorial. So as n approaches infinity, it may be unclear as to which is growing faster, the numerator or the denominator. Let's first take a look at the terms generated by this sequence. Five to the power of n over n factorial would be equal to five over n, times five over n minus one, times five over n minus two, 
and so on, all the way down to 5 over 3, 5 over 2, and 5 over 1. Now let's go ahead and group some of these terms together, meaning I'm going to rewrite this as 5 over n times all of the factors that would be less than or equal to 1. So we'd have 5 over n minus 1, 5 over n minus 2, all the way down to 5 over 6 times 5 over 5. The remaining terms or factors would be greater than 1. So we'd have 5 over 4, 5 over 3, 5 over 2, and 5 over 1. So again, we have the same terms. We have this 5 over n term here. And all of these terms here would be less than or equal to 1. Therefore, their product would be less than or equal to 1. And then we have these factors here that are all greater than one, therefore their product would be greater than one. Now we're going to take this line and create an inequality. So we'll first rewrite the product of all of these terms. Remembering this product is going to be less than or equal to one, and this product here will be greater than one. So if we wanted to create an inequality, we could say that this would be less than or equal to the first term, five over n, times these factors here. Hopefully it makes sense that this product here would be greater than or equal to this product here because we're leaving out the factors that are less than or equal to one. And this would be equal to five over n times five to the fourth over four factorial. So this would be the sequence that we could use that would always be greater than or equal to b sub n. So we'll call it c sub n is equal to five over n times five to the fourth over four factorial. Now for the sequence that would always be less than or equal to the sequence, we can just let a sub n equal zero because we know that when n is equal to one, this would be five to the first over one factorial or just five. And of course, zero is always going to be less than five. Therefore, a sub n is always going to be less than b sub n. So now we'll take the limit of a sub n and the limit of c sub n. And if we get the same limit, that'll tell us the limit of b sub n. Let's go ahead and do that on the next screen. Again, we have a sub n equals zero. The given sequence, b sub n is five to the power of n over n factorial. And c sub n, which took some work to find, is gonna be equal to five over n times five to the fourth over four factorial. So now if we can determine the limit of a sub n and the limit of c sub n as n approaches infinity, and we get the same limit, that will tell us the limit of b sub n as n approaches infinity. So we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of zero. Well, that's gonna be zero. And then we'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of five over n times five to the fourth over four factorial. Well, we know as n approaches infinity, five over n is going to approach zero. So zero times five to the fourth divided by four factorial would be zero. So from the squeeze theorem, we can conclude that the limit as n approaches infinity of the given sequence, five to the power of n over n factorial, must also equal zero. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Have a good day.